All right, so we've reached the end of the 48 state um, road trip. Um, if you've been following all my videos and you're probably wondering, hey, wait, that's not the Cybertruck. You're right. This is a loner Tesla uh, Model X. It's not the plaid version, but it's still pretty fast. Um, anyways, if you're wondering, um, so on the road trip, I hit like some small like roadkill that was there was like a roadkill in the road in the street obviously in the road because it's roadkill um so it's like a small one just laying there and it stuck up just enough that it hit the if you saw in my videos the arrow cover thing kind of got like got knocked out a little bit so i mean it it hung on for the entire road trip because that happened near the beginning of the trip um but anyways along that um along the whole road trip I found like little things that kind of were just bugging me it didn't really affect the truck at all the truck worked just fine it continued driving just fine did the whole trip I didn't have any like issues with the truck not functioning um, on the entire 18,095 miles plus what I did after that I drove like to Sacramento and then um, I did some other drive before that or after that sorry um, so yeah, I did a lot of driving even after the road trip, um, put a lot more miles on it. I think it's at 30,000 miles or so now, almost 30,000 miles. I think it's like in the high 28,000 or so. Um, anyways, um, so the tires do need to be rotated. I don't know if they're going to rotate them because the rear tires are a lot more bald now than the front. So definitely the rear tires bald faster. I was driving like 85 or so most of the trip. So um, that's actually putting a lot of stress on the tires. But because a lot of it was also um, freeway, like highway driving, just in a mostly straight line, um, you're not getting the wear from like the tires like turning. So um, yeah, the tires, those were the original tires. I did rotate them once originally at the I forgot what it was it it popped up a message and said recommended rotating I think it was like at 6650 or something like that 6750 miles something something like that and uh I rotated it and then right before the trip because I had like 10,000 miles or something on the truck I asked them to rotate it again I don't know if they didn't do it because I had the little wheel covers on the center caps um, and maybe they're like, well, we don't know how to do it. But their reason for not rotating it was they checked the tread depth of all four tires and they said the the wear was even. So they basically said all the tires were at the same wear level. So they left the tires as is. Um, one thing with getting tire rotations and things like that, or if you need to change tires or get any work done by Tesla, not just for the Cybertruck, but any Tesla vehicle, you can't just go in there and get it done. So if you need tire rotation or anything like that, um, I could have taken it to like America's Tire or Discount Tire. Um, but uh, a lot of the times since the Cybertruck is so new, they didn't have the um, little... I don't know if Cybertruck uses pucks as well, but the Tesla vehicles, they use these like pucks. So that way when it lifts up the car, it's not going to scrape the bottom or anything like that. So... Uh, when I called um, America's Tire uh, before the trip, they didn't have that, and Tesla didn't rotate my tires. So, <laughs> yeah, so and I ended up not getting my tires rotated. Um, at the end of the trip, uh, I didn't get the work finished on the truck yet. Uh, it's already been a few days now that I left it with Tesla. So I brought it to them on the 28th. It is now, what? the 30th so the 30th in the morning so um yeah i brought brought it to them on 28th at like 9 a.m or something all right and uh i mean they send you the initial quote so to replace that little arrow cover that goes in front of the wheel they were saying it would be like 65 dollars something around there and then the tire rotation is about 65 dollars but again, they didn't do the work yet, so I don't know what's actually going to happen. I did have a few things that were kind of bugging me um, with the truck before the road trip. Um, so a lot of those things actually that I brought or sent it to Tesla, 
was before the road trip, like little pieces. Um, I think when they did, either when they did previous work, or I don't know if when the people wrapped the truck, if they broke some clips or what happened. Um, but there were like, there was like a little piece that was like kind of loose where the door was, um, uh, which kind of has the connector for the door opening buttons. Um, I should have recorded that to show you guys, but, um, yeah, uh, so that, and then the rubber, like, at the end of the tailgate, I'll show you guys when I get the truck, but I'm just kind of talking about it right now, so the rubber piece, like, the whole rubber that goes on the end of that, uh, rolling tonu cover, um, the corners, like, it wraps around, and then it kind of, like, grabs under something, so the part that grabbed here was kind of, like, coming out a little bit, it didn't really affect anything. I was just like, I don't want it to eventually like the entire bar across to just unwrap. Um, and then I don't know if that will cause any issues in the future, like more like leaking or anything. Not like the Tonu cover is watertight. Um, if you watch my whole video, I'm pretty sure I showed that water got in. It gets in towards the very um, top or back and then it gets in at the front wall. The front, obviously, when you open it, all the water that's on that slide is just gonna go in. Um, but where the tailgate, like, closes, right? So at the bottom, there's a big gap there, so it lets the water out. So you don't have to worry about, like, water getting, like, stuck in the thing and then flooding. But um, in the manual, they tell you, like, the water safe areas is the frunk, the inside of the cabin or cab or whatever you wanna call it, and then under the under storage, um, in the truck bed so those areas are all waterproof the area in the bed itself is not 100 percent waterproof although it does a really good job um with like most california rain that i get here but if you're getting those heavy like pouring rainstorms with like a lot of wind then the rain can kind of get in it wasn't like a huge amount but it was enough to like make some stuff i had in there like i had some like my water my air pump um, the box, I did wrap it back in plastic so the, the pump is fine, but the box is all soggy. And then the box I had for um, the mirrors that I kept, the, the side mirrors that I took off, um, that box got kind of soggy. Um, but other than that, um, I think everything else was okay. It didn't really get dry. So it was some one box I left towards the back and one box I left towards the front. Those things got wet. And... Um, I don't know if you saw in the video, I did go through some pretty heavy rainstorms. Um, we did like go there during a hurricane. So yeah, um, there was a lot of rain. So it's, yeah, just expect water to be possible to get in there if you're planning to put things in there. Um, make sure it's not something that's super sensitive to water. Um, none of the stuff I had in there that got wet got damaged other than the boxes, which the boxes are just like replaceable. It's garbage. It's like <laughs> a chip box and a, a box from chips. And then the other one's the box for the air pump. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, most of the things I had were kind of mostly minor. I did hear some more like weird rattles and stuff that I'm not sure if they'll be able to fix or not because I'm not even sure like what would be causing or where it would be coming from. I think somewhere around the front had like a um, very light, I, I think I uploaded that, but it had a light like rattling, kind of like a very thin spring metal kind of thing rattling. So if you were to hear like kind of the rattling of a shopping cart but from very far away so it's pretty quiet um so I told them about that I don't know if they're gonna fix that or if they're gonna be able to fix that um the other one the door um the passenger door which I actually because I was trying to align it it made now it makes that noise but basically when I aligned the thing um the back end I feel like it's not um I don't know when it catches the latch uh it has like enough wiggle room that it can move like so let's say it like grabs onto the latch like this right but it has more wiggle room so it kind of like can bounce like this and i think that's what's making that noise um so hopefully it's just like an easy adjustment for them that they have something that basically instead of like catching and then going past it so that it can rattle that it will catch and just like grab like that okay i think that's what caused that issue um, because when I push the door 
while I'm closing it, it doesn't have that issue. Like I have to hold it and push it in. So that way the latch, once it goes, it just goes like that instead of, like you see that room, instead of rattling like that when it can bounce. Um, what other things? Uh, most of the things were like minor annoyances that like my dad on the trip, he didn't notice any of it. Like he, he like all the noises, the rattling and whatever, he's like, I guess it's not good to have really good hearing. <laughs> it's like, cause some, some of his stuff would rattle in the back and then it would be annoying to me. I'm like, can you figure out what's rattling there? And he's like, I don't hear anything. I don't know what you're talking about. So he just gave up and I just had to live with whatever he had rattling back there. Um, and then, yeah, so there was a lot of like interesting, funny stuff along the trip. Um, so with the cyber truck, like I'm not, super rich okay like people probably think oh you bought a cyber truck you're super rich i mean i i am well off but i'm not like super rich that <laughs> so um my dad like i was going to do it on a loan um originally and then my dad was like why are you giving the bank money like so basically my dad uh paid for it and i'm paying him back okay and then so like along the trip he would like kind of joke about it or talk about it because I was talking with um we went to my aunts or his sisters and then he was saying he got a really good deal because he like gets the car for the price um I'm not charging interest or anything and all that so yeah like it for me it's a good deal and I get to use it to advertise and do all of that and right now actually the truck is like in my name completely but um because it's for my business so i i couldn't really add him otherwise i don't know how the taxes would work with that since he's not technically part of my business so yeah but anyways um <clears throat> so that's going on and then he was saying like uh um oh it's, and it's also a good deal because like he was saying i he likes to play pickleball and he coaches so he he's retired but he makes um some money through that as well and then he was saying like see like since he brought me on this road trip now i can't make money from pickleball and since he's on this road trip he's not making money doing computer repairs so he's not going to be paying me the monthly for <laughs> the car stuff and all of that and i'm like well i mean i have to pay him i'm the agreement is i'm going to pay him back like monthly eventually no matter what so if i did skip a month i'd still eventually pay him but it takes longer right because now i'm i don't have a job where it's like oh like my employer will pay my sick leave or vacation i don't, I don't have anything like that so if i take a trip if i take a vacation i have to make sure i actually have money to pay for things along the trip and when I come back I can't just be like whoops I spent all my money on the trip I have no more money <laughs> so um YouTube helps a little bit with that but it's nowhere near what I need to pay for all my stuff so YouTube's like it's like side a little additional money um so originally my plan was not to get if you've been following my videos I was not planning to get the Model Y originally um, and I was waiting for the Cybertruck, but I had a, um, uh, so I had a 2023 Prius before and the catalytic converter got stolen. Um, and I didn't, that was a really old car. I had the, tw uh, 2003 Prius, the one that's not hatchback, the regular car, the first generation. And, um, yeah, I think I got that car for $4,000 used. It ran well, it did really well. Um, I did have the one of the wheel bearings go out on that car and the um, uh, inverter pump at one point went out and I got worried and thought it was the hybrid battery. Um, I ended up getting all that stuff fixed and then the ca the person stole my catalytic converter. I think it was like Christmas or something, 2022 or was it 2022? Uh, no, I think it was Christmas 2021 because then I got the Model Y 2022 uh, March, which kind of sucked because that was the time when cars, I think were having that, um, demand issue where there was low supply, COVID was happening and all that. So it made the model Y super expensive. And 
yeah, I mean, it was good. I took the Model Y on lots of trips as well. Um, I think I have a lot of footage I still need to upload from that as well. Um, but <laughs> I have too much stuff recorded and it's a lot of work to go through and upload and make sure to edit everything and watch through to make sure everything's okay. Um, but yeah, so that's what happened. And then um, the original plan was if YouTube were to continue paying me more and more because when I started YouTube the pay went like from like oh here's like eight dollars a day here's ten dollars a day fifteen dollars a day uh thirty dollars a day forty fifty sixty and then at one point it jumped up to like over a hundred dollars a day and I was like wow they're paying me a lot this is gonna be like it's gonna pay for all the cars and everything and then um it, I don't know, it jumped up to like 100 something, I don't remember how much, and I thought, okay, like a year or two later, it's gonna be up even further, and they'll eventually be paying me like 200 a day, but it dropped back down uh, from the 100 something, like, it happens towards the end of the year, they kind of spike up how much they pay you, and I think that's because they have like all that advertising budget, and they're just dumping all the rest in, um, and then also I think probably Black Friday or something, they probably get uh, uh, more advertising budget or they charge more for advertising during that time. But anyways, so um, um, yeah, it stopped going up and then it started going back down. And then at one point it dropped back down to like 40 a day and I was like, oh no. <laughs> like, And that was when I already bought the Model Y and I'm like, the YouTube is like helping me pay for that and this is gonna make it like okay now I have to save more and make sure that goes towards the car to pay my dad back because yeah but anyways so that um, it's eventually kind of stabilized around like 65 to 80 around there so um, it's getting around spam call Hey, I don't need the music on. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. So anyways, um, so the YouTube thing went down. Originally, the thing was, or the thing I told my parents was, if YouTube was paying me 200 a day, I'd give them the Model Y and buy the Cybertruck. And that was before I knew how long it would take for the Cybertruck to come out. And my YouTube still didn't go up. It just went down and stayed there at that level, which it's still a decent amount of money. 2000, I get, it makes around right now around 2000 to 2,500 a month. It fluctuates. It's kind of going lower again. So I don't know. Hopefully it's not going to stay there. Hopefully it goes up. Um, it's getting towards the November end of the year stuff. So it's probably going to go up a bit and then it's going to crash back down again next year. Cause that's usually the cycle. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I'm going to be stressing a lot with, like, computer repairs and stuff now because of what's going on with YouTube, their pay going down. And then recently, so my brothers were actually also renting with me. And then my youngest brother, um, if you saw the video, he, uh, I don't know if I set, mentioned it in the video, but he moved to, um, what is it, not, not BC, Ontario, where Niagara Falls is. So he moved over there. And, uh, yeah, so he moved out. So that rent money is also gone. So a lot of stuff now is kind of like I'll be paying for more things and then I have less money coming in. So it's going to be stressful. We'll see how it goes. Um, obviously, if I want to play it easy, take the easy life, I could just sell everything off, get rid of the cars and all of that, right? Um, but, no, actually, I... I really like the car. <laughs> the Cybertruck is really nice. So, yeah. Um, I don't regret it. It's a really good advertising vehicle. A lot of people saw it on the trip. Were very interested. Almost every single stop, I had multiple people come up and ask about it. It's actually um, worked really well for what I do. And then people would see it and then they go, Oh, you have like YouTube? And then they'd um, ask to watch and things. So, or to be part of the videos. So yeah, no, the, the truck is nice. Um, it'll allow me also to make more of a mobile um, work area. I need to uh, make some stuff for the frunk so that I can actually use the frunk and stuff as 
a way to like hold tools better and keep things more organized. I'm considering making the frunk like my tool cabinet, tool chest, toolbox kind of thing. So that way I can like put everything in there and have like easier um, access to it. Maybe I can make something that when the, um, what do you call, when the frunk lid goes up, then tools will just be like in there and I can just grab them and pull them off. Um, that'll be really cool. I'll have to figure something out with that eventually. Um, but yeah, using the outlets on the road trip was very convenient. Um, I wanted to try more foods at like each state. Um, but my dad, he likes rice a lot and he's like, I can't go on eating like all American food and whatever <laughs> for days. So we ended up, um, if you saw in the video, most, of, a lot of the times we were mostly eating like rice and then stuff we cooked in the rice cooker, which turned out good. A lot of the foods turned out really good. And my dad said his favorite, um, food we had was the ribs we cooked in the rice pot. I really liked all, all the stuff, like for the most part, it was really good. Um, yeah, so I really like the ribs. I like the burger we got to try. And then, yeah, even the, all the stuff we cooked in the rice cooker is great and definitely is a lot cheaper. So <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of times we got grapes, we got, um, some juice from Costco. I mostly was just drinking water plus like liquid IVs and stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's what I drink most of the time. And then a few of those like monster energy drinks and other random energy drinks I had that I bought to do Costco reviews and they just sat in the car for, or not in the car, they sat in the house for a while and I'm like, I need to drink these or they're just gonna sit here forever. So I got rid of like most of those flavors that I was like, Bleh, I don't really like them. So um, what was it the Yerba Mate or whatever thing? I didn't really like that thing so much. It wasn't that great, but <laughs> anyways, um, what else? So yeah, uh, hopefully I'll get the truck back soon. I mean, it'll be in the same video because I don't want to make a, another video saying getting my truck back and also talking about the trip. But, uh, yeah, then my dad was also talking about, uh, when I was went with, with my aunt and his sister, um, he was talking about how, um, like, cause I'm also paying for the house from like buying the house from them. So I'm s slowly paying that off as well. And, uh, he was saying like, Hey, like there was this agreement. And then he's like brought in, like my dad doesn't like having a bunch of pets in the house because he doesn't want like the mess or the smells or all that stuff that come, that goes along with having pets. So, <laughs> Um, he had like all those things and then I ended up having pets. So he was like, Hey, like, see, he, there was, that was that agreement. And then he's like doing this. And then when I gave him the model Y, um, during the trip, my friend wanted to rent it. And then he said, see, you gave me the car and now you're renting it out and making money off the car that you gave me. <laughs> so I said, well, with that, I replace the tires I got you new tires I'm not really driving that car unless it's like I really need it if I don't have the cyber truck or something but I don't really need to borrow that unless the cyber truck got in an accident or something now but initially when I was having the cyber truck wrapped and all that right like I don't get a loaner from Tesla because that works not being done by Tesla but all the other uh warranty stuff and repairs I get done by Tesla I get these loaner vehicles to drive around so I got to drive like the Model 3, Model Y, uh, Model Y Performance, Model Y Dual Motor Long Range, Model X, Model X Plaid, Model S Plaid I got to like pretty much try all their vehicles um through the loaner thing I uh or the the loaner vehicles I actually didn't try one of their newer Model 3s um I mean, they don't have the really new ones for people to loan, I don't think. But uh, I've driven a 2021 Model 3 before because my friend has one of those. So I figured eh, it's just like with the newer updates with how my 2022 Model Y is. They changed like the the mechanism for the drawers and things like that and um, the glass. So it's quieter, other things. Um, but yeah, so I got to try pretty much all the Tesla vehicles other than like different year models um so it's pretty cool experience that I got to have um 
most people, I know some people would be like, that's dumb. The truck keeps having to get these things worked on and repaired. A lot of them are like very minor, like fit and finish or things um, that bug me that most people, they go and they see the truck, they don't even notice. But for me, I notice it because, yeah, I don't know, smaller things like that kind of bug me. So it's kind of tough. Like um, other people, I have one guy, he had his cyber truck and then he was talking with me about it and then um, I brought up some of the stuff and he's like oh I didn't even notice that and he's like now I think I need to get it fixed so I feel bad because I make I'm I'm helping other people get their trucks better but I'm also making Tesla have more like okay now we have to warranty this stuff that other people didn't even care about before so a lot of the fit and finish stuff honestly um, a lot of cars have those problems but most people don't really look at it that close that they're like hey this is a little bit misaligned they're just like whatever um or they don't pay that close attention to even care um so those kinds of things um and then on the trip the my uncle he found like one of the things that annoyed me with the cyber truck was the uh shade sunshade thing because it's glass here and then it like folds like this and folds like this so when the sun was like right in the middle I was like that's dumb you can't block it so he he found out or he was playing with it and then uh, he found that if you open that flap slightly the one that makes it just fold out a longer right and you just open it slightly then you can use that folded portion to like use as a blocker in between and I was like oh that's so smart so <laughs> So now I use that and that I use that um I use that quite a lot so that way even if it's like enough to block it but then I can still barely see like the sun kind of peeking through the edge I would just use that little flap to do it. So I can show you on the Model X uh how I was doing it. So basically you have this flap, right? So you would just fold it out slightly and you see how you have this bar here. So I would just like now block the sun like that. <laughs> so it was pretty useful having that um, thing so um, that my uncle found out and that was like earlier than halfway through the trip so it was pretty useful I was able to use that a lot um, what else the truck was very nice and comfortable um, the seat after sitting in it so long like I could see where the little air like you can see here there's like a circle here so these are I think where the fan kind of pulls the air in and stuff the ventilation so after sitting in the truck seat so long for like hours and hours days and days <laughs> it pushed it in to where you can see that um when I got up and then stopped sitting on it for so long it eventually kind of formed back so it's not permanently stretched that way um but one thing uh in the beginning of the trip towards the end I don't know if my back just got used to it or what and then it, it was like okay now it's fine but in the beginning of the trip you see where these circles are so it made it to where this kind of sticks up so your tailbone is, or your spine is like there so it kind of like um, was hurting my back uh, a little bit in the beginning and I don't know what happened after driving it for a while. It just, my back kind of got used to it. Like I'm used to having it like just cupped like this. So some people aren't used to that. They don't like <clears throat> the feeling of like being sitting like that. <clears throat> and then uh, I don't like lumbar at all. Like I don't like lumbar support and stuff like that. So I turn all that stuff off. But uh, after driving the truck for a while, um, I guess my body was shaped to my previous vehicles or something so after driving a while then it no longer was an issue like I drove for like hours and hours and days and I didn't have any problems like it was comfortable so <clears throat> I think the other issue was <clears throat> not just that but <clears throat> in the beginning of the trip because I was helping bring my brother like some big boxes I couldn't fit the bed in the truck bed so maybe what it was is I couldn't even sleep like laying on a flat surface so I was just laying on here and I guess that maybe that's what made my back messed up because it's not like this the Tesla seats they don't go all the way flat to where you can like lay flat it stays like kind of slanted so it's not like um it's not super comfortable if you're trying to sleep in the car, like in the driver's seat or the passenger seat. So 
but yeah, my dad, he had like the back row. So for him, he was okay. He was comfortable. He, he, at least he didn't complain about any discomfort or anything. And he preferred it that way. Um, because I told him like, if, if you want, we can like, I wanted to move everything from the truck bed inside and then open the bed completely. And I said, just sleep on there. Cause then when we stop, we sleep, but he liked that the fact that he could lay down whenever he want and then sit back up whenever he want and lay down and sit back up. But I was like, but you're supposed to stay awake for the road trip, look around outside, and then at night you go to sleep. Because we at that point, we weren't taking turns driving anymore. It was just me doing all the driving. The beginning, we were taking turns because we thought we wouldn't have that much time. So we were going to just drive nonstop taking turns. Um, but yeah, in the end, it, it ended up like I would, um, when we found out we had plenty of time, I would sleep in the driver chair until I got to Canada to give my brother his boxes. Then I worked with the mattress to make it fit halfway in. Um, yeah. And then after the second time we went to my aunt's or his sister's, then I reorganized everything like a lot better to where I could fold the mattress even better so I didn't have to like be squeezing it down when I close the truck bed so yeah I learned how to use the space better and fit everything better and um it worked out really well um definitely now I know how to road trip better in the cyber truck honestly um the truck bed it doesn't have any um like AC or anything going into there but if it's cool weather, like 70 and below, it's really nice in there, especially with that mattress. That mattress actually holds warmth really well. Um, and I don't really get cold that easily, so I only needed like one blanket. I use like that thin blanket from Costco that has like two sides. It has the cooling uh, side and then the warm side. And I just flip it to whatever side. If I want to be extra cold or if I want to be extra warm, I just flip it over. So for me that was plenty and I was sleeping in there even when it dropped like to 40 below 40 degrees 30 degrees it was fine so if you're going in there and you're somewhere where it snows yeah if you get like a warm blanket and use that you'll be fine you're not gonna freeze in there if you want the outlets are in there there are outlets back there you could technically get like a little portable heater and then plug it in there and then have that next to you um, just make sure that heater is not one where the outside gets burning hot because if you're putting it on a mattress or something, you don't want it to like fall over and then melt, <laughs> melt the mattress, right? Or the truck bed or whatever you're having in there. Um, so the other thing, um, I was thinking if, so the way we had it with the mattress folded in half worked really well because it held all the stuff off to the side. It's not going to like fall over. <clears throat> but depending how, if you get like one of those divider things, I don't know if they have one that goes lengthwise of the truck bed, but that would work as well if you can find something like that. Or honestly, you could always just lay all the way to the back and just curl up. But the thing is, you want to have access to that little pull release emergency thing in case for some reason something happens and the rolling cover doesn't work and you don't want to get trapped in there, okay? <laughs> And also closer towards the tailgate is where the ventilation is. You get more air through there uh, because, again, the bottom part is like there's a pretty big gap in there. You can like drop some stuff through there, which if you have small items in the truck bed and you like drive fast and it flies towards the back, be careful because stuff can fly out of there. I haven't had any issues with that because I know to uh, look for that. But if you put papers in your truck bed and you just drove off, there's a very good chance they could just fly out the tailgate. So, yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, what else to talk about? I guess once I get the truck back, I'll kind of show you guys more and talk about more. Um, so I, I told you guys the things my dad was kind of like complaining about and stuff and things. And then... Um, like for me when I drive I would try and like drive and if I have to pee I'd hold it until I get to the next charging station or something um, but my dad he would like um, uh, use a pee bottle like a bottle and he would pee in it 
And then um, I was like telling him like, you know, I need to pee too sometimes. So you don't need to just use the bottle. You can tell me like you need to pee. We can just pee, pull over, find a place to pee or even just pee on the side of the road if we really need to go that bad. I brought a portable toilet and uh, I only used it once on the trip. Um, I used it on the, uh, what was it? The one where we went next to that little library. I didn't mention that in the video, I don't think. But uh, I used it in the one where we went next to the library. Um, I got the runs. I don't know if something I ate or what. Uh, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> On the Washington, D.C. Um, trip. So I think that one was probably Maryland then, right? The capital. I don't know. But the one with the little library. But after on the Washington, D.C. trip, um, and no, it wasn't the corn or the... Uh, pork thing that I got from that place at least I don't think so what I think it was is I had um these jelly beans that I brought with me from jelly belly factory and I also got like the sugar free kinds and I remembered from like the thing about these gummies that they said the sugar free version makes you have acts like laxatives so um, I didn't want my dad to eat that, so I took that bag with me and then ate it along the way. And then, like, before leaving Washington, D.C., like I was saying, I had to use those those porta potties, right? And there was no toilet paper, so good thing I brought my own roll of toilet paper. I had to, like, wrap a whole bunch up and bring it with me to the bathroom. I didn't want to carry the toilet paper because then people would see, hey, he has toilet paper. So I had to put it in my pocket. <laughs> but anyways, I had to use some of that toilet paper a few sheets to like line the whole toilet seat because it was disgusting like I wiped it down I picked the cleanest one <laughs> but I wiped it down and then I put like the sheets of toilet paper there so I was sitting on the paper not on the toilet seat because it was so gross how people just like I guess they try not to sit on it and then they end up pooping all over the seat it's disgusting just sit on the seat okay <laughs> anyways so yeah and then uh so I I ended up using the restroom there and I thought okay I'm good I'm done everything's good and then like after like walking around the the capital in I think I think it's Maryland the one with that little library next to it um yeah I was like oh no like <laughs> I need to go <laughs> I used the bathroom there too I don't remember if I had to like if I had the runs there in that bathroom but <laughs> I think did I use the restroom there I don't remember but anyways uh no no I didn't so I ended up, yeah, going back to the truck, and then I told my dad, I need to use the the toilet, hurry, get go, and I had to move everything out of the way, because, like, the little fridge was in the way, blocking it, since my dad wanted to have a whole, like, area for his feet, since he was gonna lay down, and then sit up, and lay down, and sit up, so I had to, like, move everything to that side, but, um, that side had the, um, two bench side, so I couldn't lift that side up because there was too much stuff on that side. And I had to like shove all the blankets and pillows over so <laughs> that, that he was using to lay on. So I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I had to like hurry. And then luckily I made it in time and it was okay. Um, but yeah, so I used the portable toilet once. Originally the plan was like we don't need to stop like crazy everywhere if we needed to stop at a charging station if there's no bathroom there we have that and we can use that I brought like a whole bunch of garbage bags to line that with so man so many spam calls don't turn my music on okay anyways so I brought that toilet I know there's a long video long rant and you guys are probably annoyed like just staring at this I mean you can see the reflection of me I don't like really pointing the camera at my face while I'm talking so <laughs> Um, hopefully that's okay. Um, anyways, what else? Uh, so yeah, my dad would like, or in the beginning of the trip, he would, we were starting to, for the drive, right? And we were taking turns and then it was like night and I was still driving. I was like, okay, I'm going to drive a bunch more and then he'll take over. And the whole time, like he would stay awake and drink tea and stuff. And I'm like, you're supposed to be sleeping so that when I can't drive anymore, you can take over. <laughs> but like the first night or the first day, I did, f I think like 40 hours straight of driving. And then he took over. I think he said he drove like nine hours. I don't know. I didn't time it or anything. And then 
And then after that, I woke up and I was like, okay, I can drive again. I drove like a bunch more. I don't remember how much. It was quite some time. And then he took over again and drove probably another six to nine hours, something like that. And then, um, yeah, so that initially that. But then after that, I pretty much drove. I just drove the rest of it except for when we like stopped somewhere. And then like if we didn't want to pay the toll, he would either sit in the car or drive somewhere. So, um so other than that I did most of the driving I was worried when we first when he first drove it because it's so different there's no mirrors um and the steer by wire and all that and then when he drove it he's like it's just like driving a smaller car (laughs) so he's like it's easy it's not no problem and uh yeah I for me after driving the truck so much I hate this I hate this and this is way better um honestly if they kept the same UI on this screen and the Model X and the Model S and added this, I'd be okay with it. But because the battery is now down here instead of up here, do you know Do you know how annoying it is having to, you're driving, you're looking here, making sure everything's okay, and you're like, okay, I need to see who's behind me. Okay, I need to see who's on the left. Okay, I need to see who's on the right. What speed am I going? Oh, uh, what battery am I at? Uh, where do I need to turn? Oh, here. Oh, they'll they'll also have like the map here as well on the Model X and the Model S. Like not the map, but just like the next turn direction, which isn't as good as the map because it'll say turn left onto this exit, and then there's like multiple exits, and you're like, which one? <laughs> and then you turn on the wrong one. It's better that you can see this. You can see the lines. You can see where to go. Right. The other thing is on the Model X and the Model S. You see this music thing here. I can't get rid of that. Like, like go away. Can I? I mean, I can maybe get it completely to go away. I don't know. But uh, on the Model Y, the Model 3, the Cybertruck, this can also turn into your trip thing. You can see how many miles you went. You can see how efficient you're driving. You can see your tire pressures by just scrolling through this. You can't do that on the Model X. All you can do is move it to the left or right. Like, I, I don't need that. The other thing is this screen can like rotate. I don't need that either. It's perfectly fine being flat this way. I don't need it like angled to me slightly. So honestly, the Model X and the Model S, I mean, I know some people love it, but I think it's very stupid. It's bad design. And if the people that love two screens actually gave this more of a try and drove it for like a month, you'll probably end up going back to this and go, this is stupid. (laughs) Like, it makes no sense. Like, the Cybertruck, you have your rear camera here. When you signal, you have the signal here. So you see the Model X here? Okay, this is the right signal, this is the left signal, but there's no way for you to really know unless you see this little part of the car, which when you're driving and you're quickly making turns and stuff, this little thing is not a good enough indicator. The Cybertruck, what it does is it puts the arrow up here. It shows you which way you're looking at. The Model X and the Model S, it puts it over here. So if you accidentally push the wrong button here, you're you're going to be like, oh, okay, the left side is clear. And then you turn, but this is the right side camera, and you're going to crash into somebody. So you have to make sure, look at this, make sure you're going, you press the right one. Or be very confident that you press the right one. Because if you press the wrong one, (laughs) you're going to have problems. Or you're going to have to look out the mirrors. Then that defeats the purpose of these blind spot cameras, right? Right? You don't need this redundant, like, double mirror thing unless one breaks. Like, if for some reason the cameras stop working, okay, I'll switch to looking at the mirror because I have to. Not because it's more convenient. Not because it's better. It's because I have to, right? So if you really, really, really had to, because you have the rear mirror, you have the left, right. So the Cybertruck, obviously, if you were to like blank out the screen, let's say you smash this, then you're like, oh shoot, if I got rid of the mirrors, I, I don't have a rear mirror, I, have, I can't see, right? Then you gotta be very careful, slowly, slowly, like kind of inching your way to like merge over if something's going wrong or just keep going in a straight line until if it's not smashed, if you just reset the thing, then... It, it should eventually come back or you can do the two scroll wheel thing to reset it. I haven't had that issue, 
but if I purposely like reset the thing while I'm doing that <laughs> while I'm driving then you got to remember okay I have no mirrors you can't see what's to the side so you have to be extra careful you can look out the back like you'll still have the windows and stuff there but the very back tail um, you can't see completely so yeah but for when it works which I haven't had any issues it works extremely well having all the cameras here having the left the only thing I wish is the rear camera that they add the left and right cameras up right above it because they do have a, like a little gap up there with nothing there you can put like a little slit of the left and right you don't need the full view or anything that would be so much better um, that way you can see left right and rear all in one place and yeah that to me that would be much better um, you can drive much better you can see front you can see front left right rear all in one area right here you don't need to turn your head up here turn your head over here over here over here like and then over here like this why why do people want this <laughs> like it makes no sense one screen makes more sense but I guess since they're going into the self-driving stuff they're probably like thinking eventually we're just gonna get rid of all of it together all together and this is just gonna be a screen for entertainment right so I don't think they're ever gonna program uh, the Cybertruck to have the left, right, and rear all at the same time that doesn't take up your whole screen and makes the rest of the screen useless. Um, but it would be awesome if they did that and it would be a much more fun vehicle to drive. The self-driving was extremely useful um, on the long drives. So yeah, this is being a very long video. I'm sorry, hopefully you enjoy hearing what I'm talking about. If not, I'm sorry. But um, if you're here this far, then I guess you enjoy what I'm saying or talking about. But anyways, yeah, the self-driving was very useful. Um, it did miss some turns, but it's funny because I take over and then I miss the turns too, or I take the wrong turn. So it drives like a human. It does, honestly, it drives better than a human to me. Um, the only thing is uh, with the first release it was kind of going on the lines a bit i feel like they fixed it in the last uh update because i didn't have that issue really after that update but it could just be there was some strange circumstance that it was doing it i don't know um but yeah the cyber trucks uh self-driving worked really well um and it made the trip a lot nicer and easier i know some people think that it makes it more stressful because then you got to watch the truck and make sure it's not doing anything stupid but for most roads, you know it's going to do fine. And then if you see something weird, complicated going on, that's when you pay attention. Or you can even just disengage it and do that part yourself. But uh, for the most part, like, it did everything really well. It didn't do anything that it was going to, like, get me in an accident or die or anything I didn't feel. But it did do, like, some wrong turns, which I did as well. So I can't say it's... Um, bad for that I mean people always do that as well it's it can't be perfect with all the exits <laughs> um, so yeah uh, I guess we'll wait till the truck comes back and then I'll talk a bit more um, the long dash was a little bit of a um, trouble cleaning wise <laughs> like a bug went in and then it went like a moth or something went all the way to the end and I'm like I can't get that out I, it's still there I think but unless Tesla cleaned it <laughs> Um, the other thing is I have dandruff and stuff. So the holes in these seats, like they have it on all of them now, except for the Model Y, I think, because they all have uh, ventilated on the front. My dandruff gets stuck in there and then I have to use a vacuum and it's kind of difficult to get out. But it's, I guess it's the trade-off if you want ventilation on your seats. Somebody needs to make one where it just turns on a refrigerator, but I guess that would be a lot less efficient. <laughs> um... But yeah, so the truck held up really well. Um, I was thinking the tires actually would be a lot more bald by the end of it, especially I was driving 85 mostly the whole way. Um, and I've heard some people had to replace their tires a lot sooner. Those tires aren't the uh, efficient um, road tires. They're the all-terrain versions. Although they do design it somewhat like road tires because the tread is pretty close together. It's not that aggressive. Um, but yeah, my next tires, I was looking it up. I think they have like some Michelin ones that 
the sipes are weird. Like, they're not lines all the way through the tire. They have, like, little circle sipes and then the little wavy, like, thin lines that go sideways. Um, when I looked it up, I saw people were using it on Rivians and stuff. So that should increase the efficiency by quite a bit. Um, it won't look as cool as the Cybertruck ones. But, I mean, yeah, I'd rather have a longer-lasting, efficient tire. I'm that kind of person where I don't care as much about how it looks, but I do care how, how it looks. But if it can save me a lot in, like, range, money, and all that, I'm going to go for it. Um, that's partially why I took off the mirrors, uh, even though actually having the mirrors on versus off it didn't make a huge difference in the range, I feel. Um, but yeah, I'm waiting also for the aero covers from Tesla. I hope that also adds some uh, fuel efficiency. I don't know. They sent me an email a while back that they're waiting for them, but I don't have them yet. Um, I saw some other trucks with them. And yeah, uh, the one other thing that is nice with getting not the non-Tesla tires is I don't have to worry about that design not lining up with the tires. So they can put on the tires on the wheels however they want, and it should be okay. But we'll see if it looks good or not. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, right now, I still have free supercharging from Tesla. Um, that's why I did this whole long road trip, uh, because when I installed the PowerShare, they said they weren't able to enable the PowerShare yet. They're working with the utility company or something, I don't know, because I have solar that... They, I guess they don't allow solar plus the truck being able to push power back. Um, my solar doesn't go to battery packs. It just goes straight to the grid. So I don't know. Maybe that's why. Um, so hopefully they'll eventually get that. But I'm wondering if they still don't get it even after my free supercharging ends. Are they going to give me another year of free supercharging? I, I wouldn't mind if they gave me free supercharging forever and just never enabled PowerShare, honestly. <laughs> free supercharging is awesome especially since the truck i can use it to power other things and i can use it as a mobile office um so i calculated it um supercharging is usually more expensive so um i forget what i came up with but i think energy wise if i were paying out of pocket and plugging into tesla and paying for it i think that would have I burnt like over $4,000 of electricity paying the actual rates that Tesla charges because they charge more for the superchargers along the interstates and freeways. And then in the cities during peak times, they actually charge even more than that. But during off peak and partial peak, it's cheaper. So normally when I do a drive and I have to worry about how much it costs, I'll try and time it to get the cheaper rates. Uh, because during the expensive rates, it actually costs like about the same or sometimes even more than a gas car, depending where. Like um, California's gas is super expensive, so it makes sense. But if you drive over to the East Coast or wherever in the middle, like Texas and stuff where their gas is like $2 or something, less than $2 now, um, sometimes, then electricity, if you're paying $0.40 cents a kilowatt hour, that is not a good deal. Like... I drove around all the states and some people are getting like less than 10 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's crazy, but that's at their homes. I can't plug in at people's houses and pay them their electricity rates. So yeah, um, depending how you drive, how you plan to use the truck, it's best if you have a place to plug in at home or somewhere near your house that you know the rates are cheaper. I have a place near my house where the rates are cheaper, but I have to unplug it every four hours and plug it back in. So, um, whether that's worth the hassle or not, that's up to the individual um, or driving to a supercharger because uh, charging at home is um, a little bit more expensive than the supercharger down my street if I charge after midnight. But whether it's worth it or not, that's, yeah. All right, anyways, uh, we'll continue once I get the truck back. If I remember anything else to talk about, then I'll talk about it. But yeah, that's it for now. That's almost an hour. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And yeah, this is the model x loaner and yep all right i'll talk to you guys more once i get the truck back i think if unless i come up with something else after all right we'll see you guys then oh um yeah and if you guys didn't watch my other videos the one thing i like with the model x push that button it opens and then you can either use the the screen it has a thing or you can even just push that 
then it closes itself. I think a lot of people don't know that about the Model X. Um, and then you have this. The one thing I don't like about the Model X, but people like because it's cool, the wings. But because this comes up like this, you can't store anything here. So now you lose that whole pocket of stuff that you could have normally put things in, see? So whether that's worth it to you or not, I guess some people said it's good like if you're in the rain, but that's only good if the rain is falling straight down because the wing is pretty high up. Um, it's also useful, I guess, if you're putting your kids in the back seat because you don't have to like lean over. You just like carry them and put them in. But yeah, honestly, um, this is the only feature I like with the Model X. And I guess that it's fast, but having a faster car just wears out your tires more, right? And then costs you more in energy. Although this vehicle costs less to drive in energy than the Cybertruck because the Cybertruck's heavier and less aerodynamic. But uh, yeah, okay, that's it for now. I'll see you guys when I have the truck, I think. Bye.